How you guys doing? Welcome to Country Mash. Today I want to share with you guys a tent that I got into review that I think, well actually now know, would make an excellent portable bug out slash emergency shelter. Let's talk about it. All right, so those of you guys who follow me at the Country Mash Facebook page and the Country Mash Instagram page, you guys have already seen a couple photos that I've posted and I've shared a couple stories on there. So you guys know that I do have a, a little bit of a crazy story to share um, that happened when I was out testing this tent. So I'm going to save that for the end of the video when I go over my overall experience of the actual tent that the Stout Tent Company sent me to test and review. Um, but first, I wanna start the video off by talking about why you may want to consider uh, having a portable bug out slash emergency shelter. And then I wanna talk about why you may wanna consider the type of tent that this is, which is a canvas bell tent. And then I wanna share with you guys my review and my experience with the Stout Tent that I have. Um, and kind of go over why I think this is actually the best option when it comes to bell tents in general. So uh, first we're gonna kick it off by talking about why you may even want to have a portable bug out emergency shelter. All right, so first of all, if you're someone who thinks that having a bug out plan is a good thing, you've probably heard from other people that you're a little over the top and maybe it's ridiculous and you're just crazy and uh, you're paranoid and all that stuff and you know, if. If you're someone who doesn't believe in having a bug out plan, then you're probably watching this video about to click off and you're kind of curious about what I have to say about maybe why it's good to have one. Um, but you know, one of the first things people assume is, you know, like, oh, you think you're gonna bug out because the zombies are gonna come and attack. Um, and like, yeah, that's a little ridiculous. Although it is 2020 and now I believe anything is possible. Um, but the reality of it is uh, there's natural disasters that happen all the time that cause people to bug out. And whether they look at it as bugging out or, um, or not, however they want to look at it, um, like take Hurricane Katrina, for example. Uh, there is a tent city in New Orleans after Katrina hit because it wiped out neighborhoods. People's houses were gone. And you know, if, if we have earthquakes that knock down neighborhoods and homes, you may have to get out of town for a little bit and you may have to stay somewhere. Not everyone has you know, friends and relatives with you know, a big enough house to stay at. And so maybe you just have to go somewhere to kind of uh, hold up for a little bit until things get better. Um, and, and there's a lot of other situations where you can lose your home, you can lose your permanent residence. And so having a portable uh, bug out slash emergency shelter is not a bad idea. And a lot of people might argue like, oh, I, I could go get a Coleman tent from Walmart and that would work just fine. And I could say, yeah, in some situations, a, a cheap Coleman tent could work um, if you're only having to stay somewhere for a short period of time. But it depends on where you live in the world. If if you're somewhere that has pretty harsh winters or you know extremely hot summers and you need to escape the weather uh, you want a substantial shelter to live in not you know not just like a flimsy nylon tent it's good to have a bug out plan it's good to have bug out bags and it's good to have a bug out shelter just in case all right so now why a canvas bell tent for a portable bug out slash emergency shelter well, what is a bell tent? A bell tent is a tent shaped like a bell with a center supporting pole, and then it's tied down to the sides with guidelines. So it's kind of between a teepee and a yurt, if you kind of want to look at it that way. Now these bell tents are not exactly designed to be permanent structures, but you could live in these canvas bell tents for a pretty long time if you really needed to. They're durable enough that there's actually people out there who have set these up and lived in them for several years. So while they may not be designed for it, it's definitely doable and it'd be a lot more comfortable and nicer to live in than you know your standard camping tent. So it's one of those super durable tents, but it's also really simple and easy and it packs down to be portable. So kind of going back to what I was talking about before, uh, you want something really durable that can withstand weather conditions like snow, rain, hail, um, extreme heat, stuff like that, um, even high winds. Um, but then you also want it to be, you know, portable, easy. If you do have to move a couple times, you know, from place to place, um, or just simply, uh, you know, the initial bug out, um, you want something you could throw in the trunk of your car or in the bed of your truck, 
and go anywhere. Um, you know, some people may have trailers or stuff like that. Those will restrict you from going certain places um, simply just due to size of your vehicle. Um, but, you know, having something like a tent that does pack down, it, it makes you very uh, portable and maneuverable. So that's why I think, you know, after all the research I've done, there, there are a ton of good options out there. But I really do believe that a canvas bell tent is an excellent option for a portable bug out slash emergency shelter. So moving on to the tent that I got into review, why would you want to go with Stout Tent? They use some of the best materials that you can possibly use for these tents. Uh, this is something that you can pass down to your grandkids if you were to take care of it. The model that I have is the Overland 5000 Sun Forger, which this one is the most robust top of the line tent that they offer. Uh, however, they do have some other models um, that are cheaper and uh, have a little bit less features. They're still just as good, just less features. Um, the Pro model is their best-selling one. It's a great value for what you get. And then the Ultimate Series is their least expensive tent. Um, and it's just their original tent that they came up with. So they're all great tents. Um, but the one that I have is, you know, fancy name, the Overland 5000 Sun Forger. It's the model that has all the bells and whistles. But the main difference between these different models is going to be the canvas weight. So the one that I have is some of the best canvas that you can get. It's a Marine Boat Shrunk Double Weave Army Duck 10.1 ounce canvas sourced in the USA. So some of the other models that Stout Tent offers do come in different sizes, but the Overland 5000 Sun Forger is a 5 meter or 16 foot in diameter bell tent, and it stands about 10 feet tall. You do have the option to choose between a single canvas wall design or a double wall design. And the double wall design essentially has an inner fine mesh wall. So if you want to roll up the canvas walls completely around, um, that would give you the max ventilation. And I could tell you when I was out using it, um, it was about 95 degrees. Being able to roll up those walls to get, you know, all that ventilation and that breeze across through uh, was truly amazing. And it really kept it nice and cool inside. The tent does use YKK zippers, which are some of the best zippers around. They're just known to be durable and long lasting. And Stout Tent actually claims on their website that they're the only company using these YKK zippers on these bell tents. So again, that just reiterates that they use some of the best materials. The tent does have four screened vents. So even when the tent is closed up, you have the doors closed, the windows closed and all that. You do have ventilation up at the top that's always opened, but they are screened. So you're not going to get bugs or anything like that inside. And the bottom of the tent is a heavy duty 17.6 ounce ripstop PVC waterproof zipped in ground sheet. So pretty much it's just a really heavy duty um, rubber like sheet that you can uh, actually take out. So if you didn't want to use the ground sheet, it fully unzips and you're able to remove it. Um, I personally did lay down another tarp underneath as a footprint. That's just something I always do, whether I go backpacking or camping in you know, a cheap nylon tent. Um, I think having a ground sheet as a sacrificial sheet is just always a good idea to do. Um, it will just make your actual tent ground sheet last that much longer. The doorway is a five and a half foot tall A-frame door. It has main canvas doors and it also has secondary doors that are made out of a fine mesh. So if you want to roll back the canvas doors and just have you know the screen doors, that will give you some extra ventilation as well. So on top of the fact that you can roll up the canvas wall to leave yourself a screen mesh wall all the way around, you can actually unzip both of those walls completely and actually have a like a floating uh, teepee shaped structure with no walls at all. So I actually did not do that because we were out camping, but you actually are able to do that. So if you had to set this up at a beach or in the desert and it was getting super hot and you didn't really have to worry about critters coming in, you could remove both of those walls to get the maximum ventilation to keep it nice and cool. Now on the flip side, if you were to use this somewhere that got really cold, it does have a built-in stove jack that accommodates three inch to six inch stove pipes, which has a Velcro cover. And this option really makes this tent a great hot tent if you were to go winter camping or if you just had to bug out somewhere really cold, um, you're able to put a wood stove inside. Now, I brought a wood stove with me and I was gonna use it, um, but due to the weather that happened and the kind of wood stove that I brought, um, I wasn't able to actually use it for heat. Um, I can do a separate review on the, the wood stove I have. It's the Camp Chef Alpine wood stove. It's probably like 
the best out of the cheap wood stoves that are out there, but um, it wasn't able to work for us just due to the crazy winds that we had. But you do have the option to use a wood stove, which is really nice. As far as the construction of the tent, it utilizes these large rebar stakes and also reflective ropes. The whole tent is double stitched together for durability and it's actually triple stitched in the really high stress areas. So I'm not going to weigh it myself due to its awkward shape, but Stout Tent does claim on their website that it weighs around 95 pounds. So as far as a durable and you know heavy duty shelter goes, it's not that heavy. But obviously when you compare it to you know a, a nylon standard camping tent, it is heavier than that, but still it's manageable to, to move around. It's easy to put in the trunk of a car. It's easy to put in the bed of a truck and it, it makes it still portable. All right, so now let's talk about my overall experience. I wanna share with you guys the things that uh, I observed that may not have been uh, the best. And then I wanna share with you guys all the things that I really, really liked about this tent. So first one being uh, setting it up. Um, I learned the hard way. My very first setup was up in the Sawtooth Mountains when we were camping um, in Idaho uh, by a lake called Pettit Lake. And um, weather, I think, was supposed to be, you know, like in the 70s. And then it ended up being around 95 degrees and it was really hot. And I realized uh, that it does not come with any paper instructions inside. So once I got up there, um, I, I was kind of worried, but at the same time, it's such a simple design. I mean, you, you stake it out. You throw the pole up in the middle and then you guy out the walls. Um, so it's it's not that hard to figure out. The one thing that kind of was taking me a little bit to figure out was the tensioners for the guy lines. Um, I, I've used many tents in the past, but I've never seen any tensioners like this before. And I just couldn't figure out how, like, which way they went and all this stuff. So uh, luckily we did eventually figure it out and everything was good. And I'm glad we did figure it out because later that night, after we had this 95 degree you know, heat wave, we had one of the craziest storms that I've ever camped in before. Um, we had winds that were probably 30, 35 miles an hour, um, steady winds, and then gusts, I would say up to 45 miles an hour. Like we all kind of discussed it. We had some other uh, family camping around us uh, during that trip as well. And it was crazy winds. Um, my father-in-law had a REI tent. I think it's called the Kingdom Tent. The entire wall, like it was just caved in. Um, it was going crazy. And the Bell Tent, I hate to say it, but this thing is stout. Um, it is a really sturdy tent and I was really impressed. And so I had set up the uh, wood burning stove and it knocked over the chimney. And so that was the reason why I was not able to use the wood stove. Um, I didn't have, um, I guess if you're going to use it in high winds or, you know, crazy weather, you want to get hose clamps and you want to clamp the uh, the pipe together. And you also want to guy that down. And I didn't have any of that stuff. So I did have to take it down uh, during that night. And then on top of that, we had crazy downpours of rain. And we had all these lightning strikes probably within a couple hundred yards away. And it was just a wild, wild night. Um, I got a little bit of footage of inside the tent when it was raining and we had a little bit of winds, probably 20, 25 mile an hour winds. It was, it was crazy and we totally survived. Nothing happened. None of the guy lines came loose. Nothing like, it's almost like the tent was completely unfazed. So. Um, I was really impressed with that. And in the middle of the night when it was pouring rain, um, it never got wet on the inside of the tent. So the water wasn't even going through. So normally canvas has to get wet and absorb water in order to become waterproof. But the waterproofing that they put on this tent made it so it didn't even go through. So that was really nice. And then by noon time the next day, the tent was completely dry. So it was a great experience. The amount of space inside the tent is so big that you can fit three queen size mattresses with room to spare for gear. So it's very comfortable to stay in and big enough if you really did have to live in it temporarily. Overall, it was a really nice tent to stay in. And if I did have to bug out or I had to get out of Dodge and I have to live somewhere temporarily for a while, um, I would much rather stay in this tent than any of the other kind of camping tents out there. 
Um, you know, obviously they have, um, I think they call them straight wall canvas tents. A lot of, you know, outfitters use them for hunting. That's also a good option, um, you know, as far as durability goes, but they're definitely a lot bigger, a lot bulkier, and a lot harder to set up. And I don't even know if you could do it by yourself. I, I guess you could install those by yourself or set them up by yourselves, but nowhere near as being as easy as a bell tent. Now, is it something I would bring out? Um, because I have it, I obviously want to enjoy it. I don't want to just buy it and keep it in the garage for when I need to bug out. Um, so is this something that I would bring out every weekend to go camping? Uh, probably not because it is, you know, on the big bulkier side when it comes to camping tents, but it's definitely something I would continue to use for recreation. I would definitely bring it out every once in a while to have, you know, fun trips with the family and even winter camping. Um, now that I have something that can, you know, have a stove in it, um, winter camping sounds pretty fun to me. And I think I might try to get out there and do that this coming winter. Uh, hopefully I have time to do it. And if I do, Maybe I'll do a video on it. If you guys want to see something like that, you know, put some comments down below that you would love to see a winter camping video. Um, I think it'd be a ton of fun. It'd be an adventure. You know, it'd be different. Now, one of the last things I want to mention is one of the, the things I struggled with, which is packing it up. Now, I actually didn't think I was going to have any problems packing it up, so I didn't film it. Um, I can show you guys right now the aftermath, but like almost all things, uh, tent, or camping related, um, once you use it and you try to put it back in the same bag that it came with, it's almost impossible to get it to fit like the manufacturer did it. So I did struggle with getting it to fit in its original bag, so I'm not able to close it. Um, I'm able to still carry it and pick it up and put it in the trunk of a car or put it in the, the truck, but to get it to fit exactly how they did it, I think it's gonna take some practice and it's possible, it's totally possible, but it's not that easy. So the workaround would be to get maybe a bigger a bigger bag for people because I know most people probably won't be that good at packing it away because um, it's, it's a heavy tent. This thing's a beast. So when you're trying to roll it up, you can't be as tight as you would, you know, as like a, a sleeping bag or a tiny roll-up tent or something like that. Um, so it would be nice to have a little bit bigger of a bag, but to be totally honest, it's not that big of a deal. I guess the other thing that some people may have a hard time with is the price. Now, the one that they sent me is their top of the line tent. So this one does range from about $1,700 to $1,900. So just under $2,000 for the top of the line with all the bells and whistles. But the other models that I talked about earlier, like the Pro Series, ranges from $775 to $945. And the Ultimate Series ranges from $655 to $895. So you are able to get your hands on one of these canvas bell tents from Stout Tent. Um, pretty affordable. It just depends on what your demands and your needs are and how much you want to spend on one of these tents. But I do think any of those models would be good for a portable bug out emergency shelter. If there's anything I missed or if you just if you guys have any questions about the tent or anything about you know bug out shelters or um, other style you know bell tents or canvas tents um feel free to leave comments down below guys i i do i love this kind of stuff i'm going to try to introduce more outdoor stuff to the channel um, i do a ton of outdoor stuff just in my personal life um, i i go backpacking i love camping i love fishing um, i love all that stuff i live in idaho so it's like heaven out here um, so if you guys want to see more more of that kind of stuff, you know, put a comment down below saying you guys want to see that stuff. Um, I've always hesitated whether I should introduce more outdoor stuff or not, but I'm going to I'm going to try it this summer. I'm going to do more outdoor stuff for you guys. So hopefully you guys enjoy the video. Hopefully you guys got something out of it. If you did, go ahead and hit that like button. Thank you to everyone who subscribed to the channel. You guys seriously rock. I love all of you guys. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. I'll see you next time. Yeah.